France strategically limited access to knowledge and resources during Burkina Faso's colonial era, perpetuating a dependency that persisted even after nominal independence. The colonial administration withheld critical information about resource exploitation and economic development from the local population on purpose. This calculated move ensured that African nations like Burkina Faso continued to rely heavily on European nations for expertise and economic sustenance after independence. The consequences of this historical manipulation are still visible today, especially in the extraction of natural resources such as gold. Foreign companies, often of European origin, control and own a large portion of Burkina Faso's gold mines, mirroring a pattern seen throughout Africa. This situation exemplifies the long-lasting legacy of colonial practices that prioritized external interests over empowering local communities to harness their resources for self-sufficiency in economic growth and development. The lack of infrastructure in Burkina Faso made immediate control of the gold mines difficult for Captain Abraham Chor's government. Recognizing these constraints, Chor waited for the establishment of a gold refinery, a critical asset for handling and refining gold for mines, ensuring higher selling prices. Tror recently began the construction of Burkina Faso's first gold refinery, which is set to revolutionize the country's gold sector. This significant step is intended to restructure the gold industry by penalizing foreign entities that have long exploited Burkina Faso's gold reserves. In upcoming video, we'll discuss the refinery's impact on the Western gold market and its ramifications for the companies that exploit the country's resources. Prior to this development, Burkina Faso's military junta planned to restructure the gold mining sector in order to increase the nation's share of profits and promote long-term growth. The junta proposed strategies for renegotiating contracts, revising fiscal terms, and raising royalties and taxes. These policies were designed to ensure a more equitable distribution of wealth generated by Burkina Faso's gold resources. Furthermore, the Chonta intended to draft legislation allowing for the reclamation of gold mines and requiring companies to invest in local communities for infrastructure, social services, and job opportunities, fostering inclusive growth and reducing reliance on foreign entities. Burkina Faso's military junta outlined plans to increase local participation in the mining sector, including joint ventures with foreign firms and the establishment of state-owned enterprises. They plan to renegotiate mining contracts in order to increase the government's profit share, and they proposed establishing a state-run mining company for new gold mines. Burkina Faso recently began construction on its first gold refinery, led by Captain Ibrahim Traore which is expected to generate direct and indirect employment while refining approximately 400 kilograms of gold daily. During the launch event, Troy emphasized the importance of domestic gold refining, aiming to reduce the practice of exporting unrefined gold at lower prices while potentially increasing state revenue by refining locally. This move represents a shift toward gold processing within the country, echoing the emerging trend among African mining nations to reduce reliance on raw material exports. Similarly, Mali, Africa's third largest gold producer, recently signed an agreement with Russia for the construction of a gold refinery, following a bill proposal in Burkina Faso aimed at augmenting local gold refining. The bill aimed to boost the economy of Burkina Faso by refining gold within the country, ensuring that a greater portion of the generated value remained within its borders. Local refining would increase tax revenue, allowing for more funding for essential services and infrastructure. This move was expected to generate job opportunities, particularly in skilled labor, thereby reducing poverty and diversifying the economy. The proposal called for 30% of locally mined gold to be refined in Burkina Faso, with the goal of encouraging technological transfer and skill development. However, implementation has been pushed back due to potential clashes with foreign mining companies over renegotiated contracts and increased government ownership. The Junta's assertive approach to resource management raised concerns about foreign investment, necessitating a delicate balance between control and promotion. This initiative is a result of Western power's historical exploitation of Burkina Faso's gold dating back to the colonial period. European powers, primarily France, 
controlled Burkina Faso's resources in the 19th century, granting mining rights to European companies that exploited the country's vast gold reserves. This period saw widespread gold extraction by well-funded and technologically advanced European firms, which benefited them significantly while costing Burkina Faso and its people. Colonial-era mining contracts favored European companies by providing tax breaks, low royalty rates, and significant control over mining operations, resulting in minimal profits for Burkina Faso. The impact was exacerbated by a lack of investment in local communities, depriving them of compensation, infrastructure, and essential services. This exploitation strategy aimed to prevent local communities from mining gold on their own. Despite its independence, Burkina Faso has continued to be exploited by Western companies, which maintain control over mining concessions and engage in exploitative practices. The establishment of a state-owned gold refinery represents a move to reclaim control of its resources, with the goal of increasing revenue, funding essential services, and driving national economic development. Burkina Faso currently receives a smaller share of profits from the export of unrefined gold. The establishment of a gold refinery in Burkina Faso represents an important step toward controlling the entire gold value chain, from extraction to refining, and thus maximizing the nation's economic gains from its gold resources. This control not only allows Burkina Faso to refine gold locally, but it also improves its refining expertise, putting it in a strong position in the global gold market. Exporting refined gold has the potential to diversify its economy and significantly increase revenue. This move aims to correct historical disparities by ensuring a more equitable distribution of mining profits. The refinery will spur community development by creating jobs and promoting long-term growth in affected areas. Burkina Faso previously lost significant revenue by exporting unrefined gold, missing out on additional income that could have funded essential services and infrastructure, thereby improving citizens' lives. The lack of a refinery hampered economic diversification and job creation, as well as potential investment and ancillary industry growth. Burkina Faso's reliance on foreign firms for gold processing reduced its control over the value chain, potentially undervaluing its gold and jeopardizing transparency in the refining process. This absence also hampered the country's ability to acquire refining expertise, limiting the country's long-term capabilities in the global gold market. The establishment of a gold refinery in Burkina Faso could transform the country's approach to managing its gold resources. Burkina Faso could significantly increase its profits by refining gold locally rather than exporting unprocessed gold to foreign entities. This increased revenue could be used to fund critical services, infrastructure, and social programs, thereby contributing to the country's economic diversification and job creation. A local refinery would free Burkina Faso from reliance on foreign firms, giving it greater control over the gold value chain. This self-sufficiency may result in better terms, higher gold valuations, and a larger share of profits. These additional funds could be used for community development, education, healthcare, water supply, and agriculture, thereby improving local livelihoods and reducing poverty. Furthermore, the establishment of the refinery would provide significant job opportunities and technical training to the local workforce, cultivating a skilled labor pool and strengthening Burkina Faso's position in the global gold industry. Collaboration with non-traditional mining nations could provide critical technological advancements, market access, and expertise, propelling Burkina Faso's growth and influence in the global gold market. Burkina Faso's establishment of a gold refinery would allow the country to acquire advanced refining technologies and knowledge from global partners. These collaborations have the potential to rapidly improve Burkina Faso's refining capabilities and establish a cutting-edge facility while also improving resource efficiency and environmental protection measures. Furthermore, the refinery project could attract non-traditional mining nations' investments, partnerships, and support. Collaborations such as joint ventures, technology sharing, or financial backing can foster economic diversity, create jobs, and open new markets, allowing Burkina Faso to sell its refined gold to the highest bidder.
This shift in selling gold to other developing countries in the South could erode Europe's dominance in the gold market and lead to the establishment of more refineries across Africa. A transition like this could destabilize Europe's gold market, causing a surge in demand and prices due to a sudden scarcity of supply, affecting global economies and putting central banks' reserve management under strain. A disruption in Europe's gold supply from Africa could impede central banks' ability to manage monetary policies and stabilize currencies. The European Central Bank, ECB, in particular, would face difficulties in maintaining price stability. Furthermore, Europe's reliance on African gold for jewelry production may result in shortages and price increases, affecting retail availability and potentially reducing consumer spending in the jewelry sector. Europe's historical reliance on African resources, particularly gold, has played a critical role in the continent's economic development. However, if this supply is disrupted, Europe's prosperity based on access to these resources may come to an end. It is unclear whether Captain Ibrahim Traore will share his strategies for disrupting gold supply to Europe with other African leaders, but such an event could have a significant impact on Europe's gold market. Despite its vast gold reserves, Europe lacks its own gold mining operations, forcing it to rely heavily on imports, primarily from Africa.